welcome back to ECA to Student Paramedic. I'm Freya and this is another video vlog for you. Just to uh, show you what my um, what my learning is, I suppose, on the road as a student paramedic. So today I um, got a bit of a, an interesting one for you. Um, it's all about assessments of the abdominal area and why it's really important to make sure you get all your facts before you make a decision on what to do, whether to, to leave home or to take in. My patient was about a 90 year old and it came up on the computer, on the MDT, on the ambulance as um, a tummy ache basically, or an abdo pain um, and a vomit. So my thoughts were going through, okay, let's have a think of the differentials of why there's a stomach ache, you know, from potentially it, uh, the thing I was being told is always think of worst case scenario first and then go down. So the worst case scenario could be cancer in the bowel um, or it could be a gastrointestine, you know, bug or something. Um, but there's a lot of differentials for the abdominal area. It's because there's so many things inside your abdominal area which could go wrong. But ultimately, we're an ambulance service that can only do certain things pre-hospitally before then we take them into hospital for them to have um, further tests and examinations. When I arrived, my patient was uh, sat in a chair and actually did look quite poorly, very, very much in pain. Um, when I asked them what pain threshold they had between a sort of a zero and 10, zero being no pain and 10 being the worst possible pain they've ever had, um, they came back, so they were about five or six, which I thought was interesting because their, to me, their face showed me almost like a nine or 10 out of pain. It was that bad. However, they were able to talk. Maybe my perception of their pain was incorrect, which is always possible. So talking to this patient, um, I got the understanding that they had about three days of not being able to move bowel movements at all. And on the day that I saw them, they were able to have a little bit of a bowel movement, though it's quite hard. Um, normal in eating and drinking um, and comorbidity wise, um, they were quite active um, for their 90 years. Um, nothing major from what I remember actually from, from seeing them. Um, so we did the normal checks. So I completed all my OBS um, just to get the numbers in as well. And we did an ECG just to rule out a cardiac reason potentially for this, um, for this tummy ache, for this abdo pain. Um, and then I got to inspect the actual area. I was able to assess um, away from the patient what their abdominal area looked like. So there was no sort of bumps and lumps. There was no scarring. There was no um, any any trauma that I could see, no bruising, nothing like that. So that's one of the first things you have to inspect the abdominal area. And then I went through the whole of my assessment um, as what uni required us to do. Got to the point where I was using my stethoscope to have a listen to any bowel sounds and I couldn't hear any bowel sounds at all, which is quite unusual. Now, normally your abdominal area is quite noisy because it's always churning. It's always trying to um, move around the food and um, it's very unlikely to have no bowel sounds unless there's a problem, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong because this is just my own, like I said, my my own um, observations. And when I was able to palpate and have a feel, the main pain came from the lower area of the abdo area. Um, and I could only press just a little bit before it was shockingly painful. So I didn't even go further than that. I thought, Do you know what? This is um, obviously you're in a lot of pain. All the medications you normally take, like paracetamol, morphine, whatever else they were taking normally for their other pains they had, wasn't making any sort of dent in their pain for today or for the last three days. 
I asked for the consent to say, would you mind if we take you to hospital? Because they have a lot of tests over there. They've got an a, the, the ability to take blood tests. They can do scans, x-rays, whatever, just to get to what's going on with their abdominal area, which the person then agreed, which is great. So took them down to the hospital, left them in the a &E department, and then the nurses looked after them, which is great. Went on to another job. Um, so we came back after about two hours with another patient and um, the staff at the hospital said, oh, were you the lady who um, uh, brought in a patient about the abdo pains? I said, yeah. She said, oh, um, she died after 10 minutes after you dropped her off. And I was shocked um, to the point where I, I remember holding my um, my my iPad to hand over my patient I was about to do and everything just came out of my brain I just couldn't think I couldn't speak and I I felt I don't think I was giddy but I felt really unsteady and I said excuse me sorry your patient after 10 minutes the um, the blood pressure went down they discovered that they had a perforated bowel there was nothing I could have done to help the patient. Um, so this perforated bowel, however it was, however it happened, must have been happening. It could have happened that day. It could have happened a few days ago. I, I don't know. Um, but I was in, uh, I was in such a state that um, one of the nurses actually gave me a, a tissue because uh, I just couldn't stop crying. I was, you know, in my uniform, in A&E, about to hand over, and like, you know, I can feel my eyes now. Um, actually, very, very upset for, for losing this patient. Um, but there was nothing I could do. There was nothing that anyone could have done because the patient hadn't seen a doctor for quite some time. And um, had they seen a doctor within the week, would they have been able to um, survive and and get to it? I, I don't know. I mean, sorry. Um, I really don't know. I don't know. Um, but... I felt that I did. I felt that I failed. I felt I've missed something. What did I miss? Did I not? Um, did not? Did I not um, get there fast enough? Did I? Because we had blue lights on. Because it, it, you know, seemed seemed that she was in so much trouble. We had to get through the the traffic and everything. Um, and did I miss some? All these things are going through my mind. And the nurses were lovely. They said, Freya, you could not save this person. And in a resource, they can't save that person. It's, you know, at the end of the day, people do die. And that was the hardest lesson that I learned that day. And probably for quite a while that people do die. Um, and you can try to give them as much analgesia as possible. You can make them, you know, comfortable um, as much as you can. Um, you can get to the right place. But if they're going to die, they're going to die. And it's not your fault. Um, obviously, if you've done something to make them die, then that's obviously different. Um, and that's a whole new ball game. But... Um, I was just absolutely mortified that we brought in a patient who was alive and literally 10 minutes after I left to go to another patient, they had died in recess. Um, so when I came back, um, rightly or wrongly, I just said, you know, is this is a patient in the butterfly room, um, which is where they place patients who have just recently just who have recently died um, just to let family come and, and sort of say their goodbyes. And um, they said yes. 
and just before I got to the, the butterfly room, I saw the family there and <laughs> um, they just came up to me and they just gave me a huge hug because I think they could see my face and I recognised them. And we were like hugging each other for about three or four minutes, you know, and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She said, no, it's 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 not your fault. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I'm sure I'm not sorry. You know, I go through my brain. Um, but it was a lovely um, sort of saying goodbye to them and giving my condolences for the loss of their ah, for the loss of their loved one. And they said, have you said goodbye um, yourself? And I said, not yet. Um, do, I you, <laughs> do I have your permission to? And they, they said yes. So I went into the butterfly room. And the patient was laying there and um, just looks like they were asleep. It was lovely. Um, blanket was placed, you know, in a very nice way, um, just like tucked in bed, basically. I spent a few minutes saying goodbye and saying sorry that I couldn't save them and saying how much I thought they were lovely when I saw them and how you have they got a lovely family with them and um, everyone was thinking of them. And then I left. And it was quite hard to go and go on to the next patient to go back and to um, <clears throat> continue professionally um, and try to keep my my face not as red as it probably is now. I don't know um, to then just get on to the next job. It was really quite hard. But um, and that night I didn't sleep very well at all. I was sort of going through my brain. So what I did was I talked to a lot of my colleagues who were wonderful. And I talked to the, the A&E staff again who um, received that patient as well. And again, they were wonderful. Um, and it kind of helped me process the grief. Um, and it helped me process and, and move on slowly. So yes, I, I have moved on. This has been, um, I suppose, well, this has been a while now since I've, um, this has happened but as you can tell it still affects me now <laughs> um makes me human yeah and i'm very proud of it um and uh i can't help you know feeling that way i guess it's because you know i've had a loved one of that age who died you know and i can i can empathize with the family who've also lost their loved one as well at that age um so i think if you empathize and you understand then the interaction with the family can be quite challenging and to keep your um your professionalism up but i don't think that makes you i don't think you should be a robot in a way of having no emotions but i think you've got to be careful of letting your emotions take over what your job is um, in a way of um, stopping you from doing what your job is. I think that's that's can be quite tricky, I think, because um, you need to have clarity of mind what the next step's going to be, where I would have to be quick on the mark and thinking about things real quickly and, you know, because it was a, um, a trauma or something like that, I couldn't have a past patient in back of my head at the same time if that makes sense I'm not sure if it does um, and so I try to go through the scenario of that last patient and I'm learning from it and I've learnt from it and I've reflected on it and so I know now that someone has a quite a bad tummy ache or any pain in the abdomen area at all take it serious because that one time that you think oh it's okay it's just a bit of you know it might be just a bug it might be a bit more than just a bug okay well i'll leave you with that anyway my apologies for what my face looks like now or probably what it looks like right now um <laughs> i don't mean to be like that so um but i hope this has helped a little bit anyway um my experiences um how how have you guys done? Have you dealt with anything similar to that? And how have you sort of tried to keep your emotions intact? And have you not 
catch your emotions in time. Put some comments below. Please make sure that you make um, any experiences you have anonymous, okay? That's no locations, no people's um, identity, um, no male, no female, no names, okay? But please do make a comment below and um, just sort of share and, and maybe we all can learn from those experiences. Okay, thanks ever so much for tuning in again. I'm trying to get put together a video um, of two paramedics who have fitness backgrounds. Um, as soon as that is ready, I shall then be posting it. So keep a look out for that. In the meantime, stay safe and I will see you soon. Take care for now. Bye bye.